All right, you guys, today we are taking on how to prove that lines are parallel. So I wanted to start off with just a recap of what we have already seen. So we have already covered five transversal theorems and, and a postulate. So we have four that are theorems, one that is a postulate, and they're all contingent on the lines being parallel. So we have to have that as our starting point. We know the lines are parallel. Okay, and that's really that arrow notation that we're seeing right here. So the arrows tell us parallel. So if our lines are parallel, that leads us to certain angle relationships. It enables us to prove that our angles are either congruent or supplementary. So we want to prove angle relationships. Okay, either congruent or supplementary, one of the two. All right, so then we have one postulate and we have four theorems. A postulate is a basic obvious idea that we know is true. We don't need to prove it. Anytime we see a theorem, we know that it's backed by a formal proof. So corresponding angles, that is our postulate. If we know that we have two parallel lines cut by this transversal, then any corresponding angles would be congruent. I can picture how, for example, angle one would slide into five's position perfectly. So for each of these, I'm gonna give you one example. So corresponding angles would be like one and five. And the relationship is that they are congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent. All right, next we have alternate interior angles. So again, if we know the lines are parallel, then any alternate interior angles are congruent. So an example of alternate interior angles, we want them to be on opposite sides of the transversal, alternate and inside the parallel lines. So here we would say three and six, for example, those would be alternate interior angles, so would four and five. I'm just gonna write down one pair. I'm gonna say three and six. Okay, alternate exterior angles. So if we start with the parallels cut by the transversal, we know that alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So alternate means opposite sides of the transversal and exterior means outside of the parallels. So two and seven, one and eight would be the alternate exterior angles. The relationship is one of congruence. So again, one more example here would be like two and seven. So if our lines are parallel, any corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior angles, they have to be congruent. They have to be identical angles. Their measures would be equal. Okay, then we have our same side or consecutive interior, the same side or consecutive exterior. So same side just means same side of the transversal. So here's the same side, here's the same side. Okay, but interior means inside of the parallels. So three and five would be same side interior, so would four and six. And the relationship is that they are supplementary. So same side means supplementary. Their measures add to 180. And an example of those would be three and five. All right, and then the other one that we learned about, same side or consecutive exterior angles, well, that would be like one and seven or two and eight. So same side of the transversal, but outside of the parallels. 
and that relationship is that they are supplementary. Keep the S's locked together. So again, just one example of that would be uh, two and eight. All right, so we've already covered this, so I went over this a little bit more quickly than usual, uh, but we, we did write proofs. You can always look back and remember how we proved each of these relationships. Okay, to summarize, we use these four theorems and one postulate when we know that the lines are parallel. And we want to prove the angle relationships, that they're either congruent or supplementary, depending on the special angle pair. All right, so now, we're interested in what happens when we flip things around. So in example one, I'm saying, well, can you flesh out what is the corresponding angles postulate? And then what would its converse be saying? So corresponding angles postulate would say, well, if we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, we know that any corresponding angles, they have to be congruent. So we know that we're reading it as P to Q. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then any corresponding angles, they've got to be congruent. So we know it's just an original conditional, the P to Q. Our starting point is the lines are parallel and we're ending up with, well, then the relationship is that the corresponding angles must be congruent. So my converse, that's where I flip around my hypothesis and my conclusion. I write it as Q to P. So if I flip that around, my starting point instead is that my corresponding angles are congruent. So if corresponding angles are congruent, then those two lines cut by a transversal are parallel. Okay, and we actually showed this with a construction. When we constructed those parallel lines, what we did is we took a corresponding angle, we copied it, slid it up into its corresponding position, and that is what locks the lines into a parallel position. So our converses are saying the exact opposite of what all of the originals are stating. Our starting point is the opposite. We start with the angle relationships. So here we know the angle relationship first. Right? It has to be congruent or supplementary depending on what the angle pair is. And if we have the right angle relationship, congruent or supplementary for a particular angle pair, that is what leads us to the lines being parallel. So here we want to prove that the lines are parallel. All right, so this results in one new postulate and four more theorems, and they're all converses, so I really need to point that out. So converse, 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 and converse. Right, it's swapping the hypothesis and conclusion. It's saying the exact opposite of what the original one said. 
So here, if my starting point is, is that corresponding angles are congruent, then those two lines cut by a transversal must be parallel. If I have alternate interior angles that are congruent, those two lines cut by a transversal are parallel, right? I can just fill in all these blanks. If I know the right angle relationship, that leads to the lines being parallel. So again, we have one new postulate, four new theorems. And we use these theorems and the one postulate when our starting point, when we know the angle relationship, So congruent or supplementary. And if we can have that relationship in place, that leads us to the lines being parallel. So our whole lesson today is how do we get to prove that the lines are parallel? All right, let's flip it over to the back side. So here my starting point is that angle one and angle two are supplementary. Does that mean that the lines must be parallel? Why? What is the postulate or theorem that says so? So I want to remind you that our starting point is the angle relationship. We know that angle one and two are supplementary. So when I identify what kind of angles are they, well, they're same side interior angles. So is that the right relationship? Do they have to be supplementary? Yes. So I'm going to start with that. So angle one and angle two are same side interior angles. Now, since we know that they are supplementary, those lines must be parallel. And then here's my because. What is my reason? What is the postulate or the theorem? So remember, my starting point is the angle relationship, and I'm building to the lines being parallel. So I have to cite a converse. This is a big area where I see a lot of mistakes. If you state the original, what you're telling me is, well, because the lines are parallel, we get this angle relationship, and we're not. We're saying the exact opposite thing. So the reason has to be because of the converse of the same side interior angles theorem. I cannot stress this enough. The original would say, starting point is that the pathways are parallel, which results in a certain angle relationship, but we're saying the opposite. We are starting with the angle relationship, which leads us to the lines being parallel. That is a converse. All right, example three. So based on the given information, which lines must be parallel, why? Name the postulate or the theorem. Okay, so I have a lot going on in my picture. So sometimes what I do is I block out some of the part that I don't need. So here I'm looking at the first one. First one is saying, if we start with angle one and two are congruent. So here's angle one and here's angle two. So I'm just drawing emphasis to those two angles. Okay, that those angles have nothing to do with this line R. So I'm just gonna block out this line for a moment. In fact, let me get something to truly block it out. Here we go, blocked out of view. 
So when I look at my diagram now, again, I'm focusing on angle one and two. What kind of angles are they? Well, we should see that they're alternate exterior angles. So because we do have a pair of alternate exterior angles that are congruent, that locks our lines into a parallel position. So S would run parallel to T, and my reason would be the converse, I really have to stress that, converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. So I'm okay with you abbreviating, that's not a problem, but I really need you to see that it's a converse. We know the angle relationship, we are building to the lines being parallel. All right, next one. One and six are congruent. So here is six. Those angles are not even touching line T, so let me block those out of view. There we go. Okay. So angle one and six, what kind of angles are they? They're corresponding angles. Is that the right relationship that corresponding angles must be congruent for the lines to be parallel? Oh yes, it absolutely is. So we can reach the conclusion that A, line A, must run parallel to R. And my reason, because of the converse, I gotta stress that again, converse, of the corresponding angles postulate. So that one is our postulate because we can see that if we take this angle, slide it into this position, it's gonna lock these lines into a parallel relationship. All right, next one, three and six are supplementary. So let me erase angle one focus on three, block this line out of view because it's not connected in any way. So three and six are supplementary. So what kind of angles are they? They're same side exterior. Is that the right relationship? Yes. So we can then say that yes, S and T, they are parallel. Why? Because, let me get my other red pen, because of the converse of the same side exterior angles theorem. All right, next one, three and five. So what if I give you that as my starting point? Three and five. Well, those are vertical angles, right? I'm not even connected to this line over here or to this line over here. So that really does not help me establish any sort of parallel relationship. So I would just say none. Right, vertical angles, linear pairs does not lead me to parallel lines. Okay, the last one is four and five congruent. So four and five, if those are congruent, does that establish that lines are parallel? So let me again block out line A because it's not connected at all. Well, if those are congruent, imagine for a moment that they're both 20 degrees. Because if they're congruent, their measures would be equal. And if that was true, here's my transversal. That line would go like that. This line would go like that. They're obviously not going to be parallel, even if these angles are congruent. So really, I cannot establish that they are parallel. Okay, they are same side interior angles, and the fact that they're congruent does not help me see that they are parallel pathways. I need them to be supplementary to create those parallel pathways. So here I'm going to say none, but I want to point out one exception to the rule. So think about it for a moment. Can you think of any angle pair that would make it work? And the only one that would make it work is if they were both 
90 degrees. So if they were congruent and supplementary, then it would work. So I'm going to give a little star here and show that there's one exception to the rule. S could be parallel to T only if they're both 90 degrees. Because, again, it would be the converse of the same side interior angles theorem. That one specific angle pair works only because the angles are congruent and supplementary. So it's the one case where it will work. All right, last up. I want to solve for X and Y. So here I'm just doing another parallel transversal relationship. I want to solve for X and Y. So when I look at my diagram here, I see a couple of different things. I can see that these two angles here and here, they're same side interior angles. So they have, they have to be supplementary. So I can start off by making this equation that 18 X plus three Y plus 22 X plus four Y equals 180. All right, so I have that first equation built. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. So here I can see that if I combine my like terms, I really have 40 X's plus seven Y's to get me to 180. But I'm kind of stuck because I have two variables. So I wanna look for another relationship. And I should see right here is another one that I could use. These two angles form a linear pair. They have to be supplementary also. So I can build a second equation where 18X plus 3Y plus 2X plus 5Y equals 180. Okay, clean it up a little bit. Combine the like terms. We have 20 X's plus eight Y's, all equal to 180. So right now I'm stuck with these two equations that have both have two variables. So this should trigger for you that, oh, we're gonna have to solve a system. So I'm gonna put them together. I'm gonna to stack those two equations together. I have the 40X plus seven Y equals 180. And I have the 20X plus eight Y equal to 180. So I have to solve a system. I have options. I can solve by graphing, right? Probably would not help me here. I can solve using substitution or elimination. For me, I think that elimination looks good here. So I wanna create opposites in either X or Y. And X looks easier. So I'm gonna multiply everything on the bottom by a negative two. So now I have 40X plus seven Y equals 180 on top negative 40x minus 16y equals negative 360 on the bottom. And then I'm gonna add down and I get negative 9y equals negative 180. So I've eliminated my x's and I just have y's. So now I divide each side by a negative nine and I get that y is 20. So y is 20. Okay, I still have to get to x, so I can just plug it back in. So to either equation, it doesn't matter. I'll pick this one. So 20x plus 8y equals 180. And I'm going to plug in the 20 for the y. So 20x plus 8 times 20 equals 180. So 20X plus 160 
equals 180. Take away the 160. So 20x equals 20. Divide that 20 away, and we get that x equals 1. So I've solved for x, I've solved for y. If I want to plug it back in and make sure that I didn't make a little goof, I can always do that too. So if I go ahead and I plug in, here if I plugged in a 1 for the x, so 22 times 1 is still 22. 4 times 20 is 80. So if I'm taking 22 and I'm adding 80, I should get 102 degrees right here. Okay, if I check it up here, this should get me the supplement. It should get me 78. So 18 times 1 is just 18, plus 3 times 20 is 60, and it does get me 78. Okay, over here, again, this should get me back to 102 as well. So 2 times 1 is just 2. 5 times 20 is 100, and I do get back to 102. So there's always ways of just double checking to make sure that your math is solid and you didn't make a simple math mistake. Have a good rest of your day.